As far as Stanford, I feel like I was probably I probably could have got out there and uh, probably done a little bit against Stanford, but you know there was, wasn't really any point because there was there was a kind of a big risk of me probably getting re-injured. You know what I'm saying? You know it's a long season and you know you just kind of got to weigh out the options. And, you know we got a lot of guys that we trust in the defensive end room, as you've seen, that uh, they can just like come in and get the job done. You know whenever. So it wasn't really a rush. I just wanted to get back. To Florida State, where I felt like I could actually like contribute and and help and be uh, be a part of the team's win. Did you feel like you were like, right back in, or was there a little bit of rust you had to knock off? Or what was it like? No, for sure. In the FSU game, I definitely like you know kind of had to work through a couple cobwebs and stuff like that. And I, I needed that game. I needed to do that to see like where I was at. And I think I would say Monday was one of the first times that I felt like me. You know, this this past Monday, so that feels good. And that. That's uh, kind of attributed to actually going in there and playing football a little bit Saturday. Was the FSU game kind of always a target date, or was it just week uh, day a day to day as Coach Sweeney says? Uh, it was it was day to day, just handling my injury day to day from like you know from like a Coach Sweeney and uh, medical staff uh, training thing. But in my head, FSU was kind of that game when I was like like I want to be back. You know, if I can and I feel like I can play, then it was just kind of one of those things that FSU was always in my head, but nothing like official, like that's when I was going to be back. You mentioned some of the other guys stepping up. Uh, what did you kind of, how happy you got to like Jaheim, uh, K. Down kind of step in and just kind of show out why you were out? Yeah, I was really happy. Uh, you know, I was probably one of the happiest guys, you know, just watching them go out there and do what I've been seeing them really do all fall camp, uh, all season. And, you know, with just so many great guys, you know, on that front and in that room, you know, sometimes you don't always get to see that on full display. But I'm just happy that y'all saw what I've been seeing for uh, going on a year now. And uh, Jaheim and Cade and A.J. Hoffler and some of those guys that had a chance to get in there and actually play meaningful reps. It's Jaheim, like, you want to be here a couple of years, but how much have you seen him just grow from what he was last year, what he is now, like being able to hold an edge versus the run. I mean, yeah, like being able to hold an edge versus the run. Obviously, he's been in the weight room uh, with us, and you've seen he's one of the strongest guys on the team from a lower body standpoint, just uh, now up to date. And uh, But just from a mental aspect and just kind of a maturity thing, just him having another year under his belt, being able to like kind of grow up uh, in the system. And, you know, that's always important for a defensive player, kind of knowing what you're doing. And uh, from just, you know, handling – his off season with complete maturity, and he, he's learning how to be a pro early, and so that's that's starting to benefit him. What was it like to go through this time away from the field? Have you experienced long spurts? I know this wasn't that long, but I imagine it felt long. It felt like we haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, it felt, <laughs> it felt like forever. Yeah. But, what was uh, it like to go through that? Have you ever experienced that, and how, how did you navigate it? Uh, I actually did experience something like that a little bit in high school. I had a I had an injury in my sophomore year of high school that kind of took me out for almost the whole season of high school. So I kind of had to assume kind of that player leader who's not really playing role. And uh, I had my tri my trial run in in high school, and it was a little rough for me, which kind of made this this run a little better. You know, you know, watching other guys, you know, play the game that you love, it's never easy. But uh, Man, it was fun to watch them handle business and just kind of see, it, just step back and see it from the point of view, just how much, how much better we've gotten and how we play as a team, complimentary. So that was great, and uh, it just made me all the more excited just to get back in the fold. You come off as certainly a, a confident young man, but what's it like to find your voice and that leadership voice when still being incredibly young in a program like this and and being out and having kind of that leadership coaching side of everything. Uh, I just feel like it's kind of a natural thing, you know. I don't, I don't really think leadership is, you know, age or, or a title. It's uh, action and responsibility. That's what uh, Coach Easton tells us all the time. And so that's just kind of a thing that we've taken, you know, across all position groups. It's not just me. It's other guys who are my age and maybe even younger than me who uh, take leadership roles. And leadership looks uh, different. Some, some guys are super vocal. Some guys are just, you know, leading by example. Uh, I feel like everybody just takes a role and uh, different ways that they can lead, and that just kind of makes everybody push push up towards the top. You bring up that time in high school where I was talking to your dad. He was telling me about like you would be waiting on me for like an hour after practice because you were just in there, you're pushing up other guys. 
what, how did you become comfortable like doing that even in high school? Uh, that was just kind of something I, I would say that was in me, but uh, really my high school coach, uh, Woodrow Briggs, I give him a lot of credit for that. He uh, he kind of sat me down, you know, when he kind of felt like, you know, I was ready to hear the fact that, you know, you're getting better by yourself. And he said, what the next step for you is going to be this year. This might have been my sophomore, junior year after my injury. Uh, he, he used to tell me that the next step for me this year was going to be how many people can you bring with you. And so I think that's just something that, that has kind of stuck with me, you know. I know that I'm going to get better. I know my work ethic, and I know kind of my my morals and you know the the standard that I try to uphold for myself. But am I going to make that a group standard? Am I going to make that a team standard? How many people can I get to uphold that standard at a high level uh, of consistency? And that's just something that I've kind of taken with me, you know, really in everything, but in college football. Do you feel comfortable doing that? Like the minute you arrive as a freshman, or does it take like a little bit? Of- uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I did, but I think it kind of started with, like I said, there's different ways of leadership, and I think that I definitely started as a guy who was just trying to be the example. Uh, I didn't really say too much. You know, I kind of kind of grew into that, but, uh, you know, just trying to be the example uh, with my actions, and that's just kind of where it started. I feel like that's where a lot of guys can contribute more than they think. A lot of younger guys can contribute more than they think uh, – then they think they probably can. If you think you can't lead, all you got to do is just be the person who looks like they're doing it the hardest, doing it the best with the most consistency. And you don't even know how you're making the people around you better because you're making them want to be better. That's just kind of, it's kind of like competition and stuff like in rooms and stuff makes a room better as a whole. You said that you took things that were hard from your sophomore year of high school that were better this time. Are there any examples of areas you feel like you handled better or ways that you approach things differently? Uh, just maintaining a positive mindset throughout the whole uh, you know, time being out. You know, I, I love this game. I love football. I don't want to be away from it. And that, that's probably the hardest part of just dealing with injury, just knowing you know, if I played in this game, I might have. But uh, you know, and also staying locked into the game plan and staying in tune with you know, what's going on with everything besides the physical aspect of playing football. So uh, even the games that I wasn't playing, I was locked into the game plan like I was running out there first that game. And that just kind of helped me just fall right into FSU and now into uh, Wake Forest week. So I am a How difficult is that Wake Forest team to kind of game plan for us with the mesh and the way they, they run it? Uh, definitely they have a have a great scheme uh, at Wake Forest with the, with the slow mesh. Uh, I think that, you know, we just got to play our keys and uh, have great eye discipline. And I think that, you know, with all dealing with all schemes, there's always a, a counter scheme to all schemes. So if we play our scheme with uh, 100 percent uh, consistency and, and conf- confidence, then we shouldn't have a problem. Any questions for Peter from Zoom? Anyone else in the room? Thank you. Thank you, guys.